Time Lords plus Mystic Mine. Yeah. Let's get into it. I hope you all enjoy. So before I get into the monsters, I'd like to point out that for Time Lords, they cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect during your standby phase. Shuffle it back into the deck. No, nope, uh, you don't take any battle damage from attacks or battles involving your Time Lord monsters. And to summon them, you have to control no monsters to normal summon them. Yeah, that's basically it. Except Sand Neon. For him, for that one, you your opponent needs to control a monster in order to um, normal summon it to your side of the field. But yeah, that's about the only difference. So when I do explain the Time Lords, I'm not really going to re-say everything I just said. I'm just going to their effects, if that's okay. So for the monsters, we do run. Sorry. <laughs> Three. Mitchion, at the end of the battle phase, if this card bound an opponent's monster, half your opponent's light points. Three. Sandion, end of the battle phase, if this card battled, uh, inflict 2,000 to your opponent's light points. Raphion, if this card bound an opponent's monster, end of the battle phase, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the highest attack monster this card battled. Two. Zaphion, end of the battle phase, uh, and shuffle all cards in your opponent's spell trap zones back into the main deck. Meteon, similar to Zaphion, but instead of monster, no, instead of spell and traps, it does monsters. And what? And however many monsters sent back from the field to the hand, your opponent takes 300 um, light point damage for each monster. One Halion, what I like about this card is if you have lower light points than your opponent, basically after the battle phase, you inflict damage to your opponent equal um from the difference between your life points and your opponent's life points so say you have 2000 your opponent has like 8000 you inflict 6000 life points so you both have even life points next up two time maiden you can special summon this card from your hand with um if you control no monsters and if you do no sorry um you can special summon this card uh, from your hand while you control no monsters you contribute it to um add a time load visual attack from your deck to your hand. While it's on the field, this card counts as two tributes for any um, tribute summon of a Time Lord monster. And if it's in the grave, you can banish it. Special summon a Time Lord monster with zero attack from your deck to your side of the field, ignoring its summon conditions. However, the only restriction for the final effect is that you cannot special summon other monsters the turn you activate that effect. Other than that, it's not bad at two. And, for, and next up, we have Exodius. Uh, shuffle all monsters from the grave back into your deck. And if you do, special summon it. We don't use the Exodia effect because we don't run that kind of build. And finishing it up, effect really just to stop your opponent's monsters from activating their effects. For the spells, we've run at least three Mystic Mind. What this card does is if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, they cannot activate monster effects nor declare an attack. However, if you control more monsters than your opponent, then you can't attack or declare monster effects. And during the end phase, if both players control the same amount of number of monsters, destroy this card. Next up, one Mind of the Bound Creator. It protects level 10 or higher monsters from target or destruction, uh, card destruction in general. That's why we run it for, to protect the um, Time Lords. And next up, two Terraforming, just to search out these, the um, field spells. Two Celestial Transformation. Switch so a summon one fairy monster from your hand. Uh, that, monster is, uh, that monster's attack is half. And also is destroyed in the end phase. However, because Time Lords don't have any attack, it's no big deal. They're fairies, so, you know, special summon with this card with ease. And you can't really destroy them by... No. They're not really destroyed during the end phase because they kind of just shuffle themselves back into the deck anyway. And, you know, for extra draw, since we do run Time Lords, worst case scenario, advanced draw tribute, a level 8 or higher, draw 2 cards. And next up, 2, Pot of Duality. Uh, evacuate the top three cards, add one card, add one of the evacuated cards from your um, deck to your hand, shuffle the rest back into the deck. You cannot special summon uh, during the turn you activate this card, but it really doesn't matter. And finishing it off with the spells, one monster reborn, because why not? Quiddle Traps, I run at least two Floodgate Trap Pull. When your opponent special summons a monster or monsters, change those monsters or monster to face down defense position and Basically, monsters changed uh, to face down defense position by this card cannot change their battle positions after that. And next up, two ring of destruction for fun, just for the extra burn. However, your opponent's uh, however, when you destroy opponent's monster with this card, 
that opponent's monster cannot ex uh, cannot um, exceed the opponent's life points. So say you destroy a 3,000 attack monster on their side and they have 2,500, this effect cannot, this card can't really be activated. But if they have 35 and you destroy 3,000, you can inflict, you know, 3,000 to your opponent, but, you know, first you take the um, 3,000 to the face. So you have to be careful with this card. And finishing it up, just for like, just for stopping monster effects, uh, lost win, but that does it for the trap cards so for the extra deck we do run two blue star for the 2000 burn one number 81 for the monster protection one number 35 basically the two level tens easy with time lords uh, all monsters you control gain attack and defense equal to the difference uh, between your your life points and your opponent's life points so say you have 3000 your opponent has 5000 no no this is a better example uh, you have 2000 and your opponent has like 8000 the difference is 6,000, so all monsters you control gain 6,000 attack points, and you can detach a material from this card and destroy all monsters your opponent controls with attack less than or equal to this card's, at um, this card's attack. And in that scenario, if you have such a difference, then this card would be ridiculous um, as long as you get it on the field. Next up, number 81. We don't really use it for its effect since it requires ranks on your side of the field. And since it only has like, it's only a rank 11, it only gains 200 attack, no, 200 defense per rank. So, you know, 200 multiply that by rank 11, it's only a 2200 defense um, protector, but that's about it. And you can detach material from this card, destroy all monsters your opponent controls with defense less than this card. But since it's only 2200, it's kind of useless. And if your opponent runs link monsters, it's even more useless. So you just use it for the, um, the uh, rank up, rank up climbing for the final monster of this deck. No, final monster of the extra deck. Sorry, uh, number seventy-seven, uh, the seven deadly sins. You basically use the um, the rank ten, rank eleven, and rank, and finally go for the rank twelve. Uh, thus the um, XC climbing. But well, what this card does, since you would do like the XC climbing, you cannot activate its first effect. No, you can't activate the following effect. The turn it's summoned. However, if you do manage to keep this card on the field, the next turn, you can activate its effects. Now, what it does is you can detach two materials from this card and banish all monsters your opponent controls. Attach one of them as XC material to this monster. And if it would be true by battle or card effect, if I'm correct, just detach the material and just negate the destruction. But yeah, if anything, number uh, 77 is a bit harder to go into. But if you do manage to keep it on the field, it's just ridiculous what you can do with it. All right, everyone, so this is the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed. Like the video, dislike the video, do what you feel is necessary. Have your comments uh, have your comments um, typed up and heard down below. If I do not get to you or if I do not reply, it does not mean I didn't. It does not mean I scrolled past your comment. I probably didn't read it. And maybe I just didn't want to reply. I don't know. I'm usually busy. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that does it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed. See you all next time. Oh, actually, by the way, I might do a Q&A in the future. We'll have to see because I don't, because like the, the channel is actually progressively growing a lot more than I expected because there was this thing where I wanted to go to 35 plus and we're not even at June yet. And that was my goal to see how far we can go before the month of June. And since we're almost hitting there, uh, since we're almost... Where we since we're already past 35 plus, how about we try going for at least 40, like a solid 40 for a subscriber count. And if we hit June, if we are able to like maybe hit that point, I might do Q&A. Maybe not a Q&A like box opening, but a Q&A like um, comment your questions down below, comment your section, no, comment your comment what you want to say in like the comment section. Uh, I will post my Instagram in the description down below. So you go to uh, check it out and maybe, you know, post your um, questions in there as well. Because I will po do a, I will like do a post where it's like, you know, um, describing, oh, you know, Q&A &A in the future. Post your questions down below. And on this day, I will try to like get to all of them in a future video kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say. But yeah, um, that's basically my goal. Like a solid 40 subscribers by the end of you know, by the start of june and if not i mean either way i'm probably gonna do the q a uh no matter what so yeah 
Well, I hope you all enjoyed, and yeah, keep that in mind. I might do it in the future, so keep it up.